At the age of 63, Mohawk, Mary two acts early, got news that she was to be evicted from her house, a house that she had inherited from her grandmother. I was born on the Ganawagi Reserve in Quebec. I moved to Brooklyn when I was only 18. Later, I married Edward. He was Irish-American, which meant that I married out. I was no longer Indian, according to the Indian Act. But who thought about status? We were in love. Without her status, Mary couldn't own the house she had inherited. She couldn't own land on the reserve, vote in band elections, or be buried with her people. This was the fate for any status Indian woman who married a non-status or non-Indigenous man. This law relegated us to the status of nobodies. She spent nearly two decades challenging the injustice, writing letters, giving speeches, crisscrossing the nation, addressing decision makers and the public. Please, search your hearts and minds. Follow the dictates of your conscience. Set my sisters free. She defended the principle that a woman's identity is not defined by her husband. In 1985, the federal government amended the Indian Act, removing the clause that stripped status from women who married non-status men. Then Minister of Indian Affairs David Crombie wrote to Mary, I could find no greater tribute to your long years of work than to let history record that you are the first person to have their rights restored under the new legislation. Due in great part to the work of Mary Two Acts, tens of thousands of First Nations women and children regained their rights. She was called the grandmother of Canada's Indian feminist movement, a legacy continued by young Indigenous feminists today. <laughs>